All right, step number three to making your relationship work. Avoiding the four horsemen. We talked about it earlier. The four horsemen are criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and stonewalling. If you get rid of those four things in your relationship, you're doing a whole lot. Matter of fact, research shows that if you have those four things in your relationship and have failed repair attempts to where you fail to make up with one another or one partner tries to make up with the other and the other one rejects that, that you pretty much have a 90% or above chance of getting divorced over the next 15 years. Isn't that amazing? Well, it makes sense because you keep attacking each other. After a while, you have to go for self-preservation and look out for yourself and leave the relationship. I'm not condoning it. I'm simply explaining why people go their separate ways. So here's what you do. Instead of criticizing, what you want to do is you want to appreciate your partner with a five to one ratio we'll talk about a little bit later. So instead of criticizing them, say the things that you really appreciate about them. So for instance, I really appreciate that you cut the grass. I appreciate you go to work every day and bring your, your paycheck home. I don't have to worry about it. You know, I appreciate the fact that you, you read to the kids when you get a chance. I appreciate the fact that you protect this house and if, I, if there's a noise, I don't have to get out of bed. And I really appreciate the fact that you wash my car and make sure that I don't, I don't need anything when it comes to my vehicle. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for what you do. You know, do you think that you could do a better job putting your dishes in the sink? That's all I need you to do. See, you see how much better that was? Now, I still said what I needed, but I did it under an air of appreciation. So replace criticism with appreciation. Now, instead of becoming defensive, Accept responsibility for the things that you do wrong in a relationship. You know, I'm notorious for um, doing the dishes later. You know, I'll say I'll get to them, but then I'll, you know, I'll get to them three or four or five hours later. I have to set responsibility. I can't go off. I can't say, leave me alone, man. I watch them when I want to. Hey, babe, I told you I, I will get to them in 30 minutes. I know how you are about those type of things. I don't understand it, but I get it. And I, I didn't get around to it for the next two or three hours, and it made you mad and, and make you think I, didn't dis I, I disrespected you. I'll make you think I don't listen to you. I'm sorry. I'll knock it out right now. Okay? Now, the second thing you need to take responsibility of is your own happiness. Your partner is not responsible for making you happy. There are too many couples out there that depend upon their husband or wife, boyfriend or girlfriend, a partner to make them happy. You need to go back to having your own life. That means if you like working out, work out. If you like doing things your partner doesn't and y'all already have rituals that you do things together already, do some of those things they don't like to do on your own. Take responsibility for the happiness of the relationship by taking care of yourself and not putting all that responsibility on your partner. Okay? Uh, number three. Instead of contempt, what, what you want to do is that you want to protect your partner. You want to hold them. You want to love them. You want to, you want to protect their feelings. You don't want to have contempt for them. You want to protect them. Imagine if you're talking to your son or your daughter or maybe uh, your mother and father as they get older. They may do things that get on your nerves, but you're always protecting their feelings. So instead of hatred, remember to show love. And it's just a simple mindset change because this is the person you pledge to be in a relationship with. You pledge for better, for worse, you know, in sickness and in health. Or if you're in a relationship right now, by being committed, you promise to take care of one another. Don't, don't beat them up because you're mad. That's your ego talking. That's your past pain talking. Don't let that talk for you. Let your love talk for you and, and show them love even when you're mad. That's what the masters do. You want to be a master? Stop showing contempt and hatred. Number four, stonewalling. Now, instead of stonewalling, you want to connect. That means don't build up that wall, men, and just make your woman feel unloved if you don't care about it. That's the biggest insult to a woman is to make her feel like you don't protect her, you don't think about her, you don't care about her feelings. You could care less because I, I get it. We're trying to protect ourselves and go numb because we can't win a verbal battle with you guys. You are superior. So what we do is just go numb and give you the silent treatment. So instead of doing that, here's what we propose. Uh, go out and, and, and do something uh, or get some, like some candles. And when you're upset and you're arguing, you don't feel like talking. You don't have to. But go light a candle. And that candle signifies that, hey, listen, we're not together right now, but I love you. I mean, we're, we're together right now. You get on my nerves, but we, I still love you. I just don't want to tell you right now. Okay? I love you, so I go light a candle. Or maybe I fix your favorite drink in just a glass that's reserved for showing love. We don't use it any other time, and I put it in the refrigerator for you, or I bring it to you. But I don't say anything to you because I'm still upset, but it's letting you know that I'm staying in the relationship. Does that make sense? You have to do things versus stonewalling. All what you can do is you can simply watch a movie together. 
and share popcorn, but not not talk. I just work out, do things that keep you connected even when you're mad versus emotionally disengaging and stonewalling. You do those things and you can get rid of the four horsemen, okay? And you can begin the course to becoming a master of your relationship. Get rid of those four horsemen. Get them out of your relationship.